It's time for Wise Guys. We International uh, Dark Sky Week is next week, and there are so many fun ways to participate in this annual event. Wise Guy Dave Leak is joining us over video chat to share some of those cool things. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Good morning, Christy. It's going really well. And as you said, Peanut and I are really excited about uh, Dark Sky Week coming <laughs> up. And uh, Dark Sky Week started in 2003, and it is a way to raise awareness not only of the dark sky, but why we have trouble seeing that sky. And I don't know if you've got any big plans, Christy, but there's two ways you can actually celebrate Dark Sky Week. Way number one is to actually go outside and experience the sky. The moon will be out of the sky next week. If we get a clear night, is to get out and see it. If we could have image number one, please. Uh, and it's been estimated that 80% of the country, and that's the people in the country, cannot see the Milky Way. This is a light pollution map of the entire country. And as you can see, there's a lot of lights out there lighting up the sky. It's a lot better if you go out west, but of course, not as many people out there until you get to California. If we do image number two, we might zoom in to our county map, and Champaign is just off the uh, map here to the bottom. And you can see the red areas there, that's Rantoul where you have uh, quite a few lights, but I've circled an area there that's one of the, actually the best spot in the county to actually go see the sky. And that is of course the Middle Fork River Forest Preserve. It's the first and only dark sky park that we have here in Illinois. And a matter of fact, even though they'll be running at 50% capacity, the campground opens this coming weekend. So cool. that, and even if you don't camp, you can still go out there. Now, if you look at image number three, the reason for uh, this, uh, the, the Middle Fork having this designation is not because it's completely dark, but it's because they have taken steps at the Middle Fork to actually make it dark sky friendly. Here's one of the new lights that lights up the ground, but notice how it's dark. It's, it, there's very little light shining on the trees overhead. And the cool thing to me is that the staff there actually made these lights. They didn't go out and purchase them. They built them all themselves. And image number four shows uh, the Milky Way that you can't really see this from in town. Mm -hmm. But these are the star clouds of uh, your home galaxy. It's been shown that uh, not only plants, but a lot many uh, species of wildlife need darkness, things like bats. You see insects flying around lights like at football games and things. And bats eat the insects, but the bats won't go near the lights. So we disrupt the rhythms of a lot of wildlife by, uh, by having these brightly lit skies. So our, and our own bodies need darkness. Uh, it's been shown by the National Institute of Health that uh, there's uh, higher cases of cancer in people that work third shift jobs because our bodies need the darkness. So. Well, one of the things we want you to do, uh, this is the second way to celebrate, is to evaluate your own home or business. And I'm gonna take the light that I'm using here as a light, and uh, one of the things we don't like is glare. This is glare, <laughs> this is horrible. And we shine lights in people's eyes all the time. This is why Peanut's wearing sunglasses back here. <laughs> but if you, instead of having lights that make glare, is you put a reflector over them. Look how much nicer that is. We're still lighting up the ground that we need, but yet we're not shining lights into people's eyes and we're not shining light up in the air either. So now you can use a lower wattage light bulb because most of the light's reflecting downward. And because of that, now you're saving money. So even if you don't care for dark skies, you're probably saving money. There's a lot of energy wasted. If we could go to image number five, you can see how, uh, the energy is wasted here. In fact, to pull a few things out of here, we see that 13% uh, of our energy bills usually goes to exterior lighting. But notice in the middle there in the green circle, uh, the energy we waste by sending it upwards is about $3 billion a year. Wow. And wow. That's, um, that's amazing. Now compared to a lot of other things, it's not a small amount, but it's, it's still significant. So what can you do? If we look at image number six, here are some things that all of us can do. So go outside and look at your lights. If you're shining light up into the air, it's wasted energy. There's really nothing nothing that's come uh, good comes out of that. Number two there, you can use a lower wattage bulb if you're put, shining the lights downwards. LED lights and compact fluorescents are very, uh, very efficient, but still you don't need bright lights. Just use the right amount of light. And it says in number three right there, just like they did at the middle fork, is to shine that light down. If you don't need the light all night, 
Uh, and number four, it says use a timer, which where I have a timer on my light in the back or and motion sensors. If somebody walks up on my back porch, the light comes on. Otherwise, it doesn't. And number five is a whole different topic, but it shows that uh, we really need warm lights. Blue light, and a lot of LED lights are, are have blue in them. Blue light's not good for our bodies. So uh, if we look at image number seven, we can see a house that's using light wisely. And it doesn't mean it's dark. They, they still have lights on. But notice how you can see the front door easily. All the light is shining downward like it should. Now, you might be thinking, uh oh, well, I want to be safe. I need security lighting at my house. If you look at our last image, number eight, you'll see a house here that has a security light to the right. That's where your attention is drawn. But look at the sliding glass door on the left and the hard shadow that's created there. Somebody could be standing right next to that sliding glass door and you'd never see them. So the key is to not just get rid of lights, but use the correct light. And, and don't just put a light up, but actually look at where you're, uh, where you're shining it. Now, a couple of things you can do for the kids, there's a website called globeatnight.org, globeatnight.org. You can actually evaluate your own sky, maybe from your backyard. Also, Champaign County Forest Preserve District is actually published a dark sky guide. I'm not sure it's online yet, but you can get this at CCF pd.org and they're also going to have some hard copies out there and if you want more information there's some goofy guy that's actually giving a talk for the champaign county forest preserve district next wednesday night at seven he may look a little bit like me <laughs> but um and that's going to be on facebook live so you can check that out so i got my only, middle fork shirt on. i could only assume that goofy guy is you dave yeah, uh, there's, there's other goofy guys, but I kind of take the cake when it comes to that. So, Dave, you mentioned a middle fork you showed your shirt there. Um, can you talk about why it's so important to have the International Dark Sky Park right here in our area? I mean, how cool is that? Well, the designation really shows that the people at the middle fork uh, value dark skies. I mean, you know, other places have dark skies, but they've actually taken steps to preserve the dark skies just as they would any other sort of biological area. And when we can start having programs again, I know our Astro Club will be having observing sessions out there when we can start doing that. Also, believe it or not, Christy, there is such a thing called astro tourism. And uh, if you ask the folks at the Middle Fork, we've got people coming in from Indianapolis, Chicago, uh, you know, they want to know where dark skies are, and they come to the Middle Fork from places. We had a call from a few weeks ago from somebody who lived north of Indianapolis that was going to drive all the way over. So, and these people, if they don't camp, will be staying in Urbana, Rantoul, Paxton. So there's actually a thing called astrotourism now. Very cool. Dave, thanks so much for your time this morning. Good to see you. You're welcome. Good to see you. Jack's got your forecast right after this. We'll be right back.